everyone and happy new year I know it's been a hot minute since I made a video that wasn't my plan I was planning on making like my normal two to three videos a week but we've been really busy and I ended up getting sick which I never get sick so I and it wasn't like really bad I just ended up with a cold in between the snotty nose and the clogged ears and the headache that I had on and off for four or five days and really uh, feel like filming so I apologize for that but we have been working on uh, a few things for Dolly Diaries and uh, that transformation video that we're still working on which you guys will probably be seeing next that will probably be our next video and I also have been editing and replacing a bunch of photos for Flickr for our guide and we came up with a new video series idea called Dolly Tales so Dolly Tales is basically going to be a video series where Colleen and I sit down together and we talk about like our memories with dolls. So whether it's like childhood memories or adulthood memories, just more of like a playful fun side to our memories so it's not as like a formal sit down kind of video like why I love certain types of dolls or like my other experience inspirational type videos. This is more like the playful laid back side and it was actually an idea inspired by some of the feedback that I got on my last video, which was the holiday edition of Dolly Diaries. Um, a lot of you guys seem to think the little story about Stovula was funny that Colleen told. <laughs> and uh, we just have a lot of things like that. So we're kind of going to do these once in a while and we're going to pick like little themes for them and talk about it. We have lots of ideas already. I'm not going to give any away. But for the intro video, we're going to keep it really simple and we're kind of just going to talk about like a brief overview of like what kinds of kids we were with our dolls so what kind of weirdos we were <laughs> um in the beginning i was two when we got into dolls and colleen's four and a half years older than me and shelly's earliest way of playing dolls was taking her christina doll who like you know was really raunchy and making her sing i'm beautiful i'm beautiful and i'm i'm older than her so i'm all like Dude, you can't make the doll say that. It sounds like really vain. But secretly, I thought it was funny. So a few years later, when we were playing with Ariel and Kelsey, remember how I used to make Kelsey say, Kelsey, Kelsey, beautiful? Because oh, Kelsey yeah. was like supposed to be a little kid. Bad time, funny so time. that was, yeah, so that was okay for Kelsey to say because she was a little Didn't girl. Didn't mom tell you you couldn't tell me what I couldn't think? Yes, when I said the thing about Christina, I was just trying to give you good artistic advice that making a full grown doll. Say, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, just kind of made Yeah, I was know. too. I wasn't very sophisticated. I do kind of remember doing that. And I also remember one of my favorite things to do was when Colleen was like at school and I was like, you know, before I went to school, I would sneak into her room and she had this laundry basket where all of her Barbies were and we didn't have any Barbies at the time. And I would go and like steal things out of her laundry basket. And I remember my mom would tell me not to do that. You're going to get in trouble with Colleen. But I would steal like really random things like Aladdin's lamp and I don't remember <laughs> stealing Jasmine's necklace but I really gunned for the Aladdin's I saw it on her ugly Sanjul Kyra doll who by the way has like that big fro hair back then. It's nothing against Sanjul Kyra. My dolls just all look scary at that age. Yeah. And I was going to say like we played with a lot of the same dolls even despite the fact that by the time we were done collecting as kids we had like probably close to 500. We played with like the same like 20-ish all yeah, the time. Yeah. And um, you know, we had like a very involved way of playing. Yeah, and then once we got a little older, like I remember when we were really little, we kinda didn't really play dolls a lot together. No. I kind of feel like part of what made us start playing with dolls more, I was thinking about this the other day, was like when I got Addie and you had Molly, I kinda feel like we both had like American girls and that kind of was like a special thing we We did to. go everywhere with Ollie and Addie. Um there's especially this one memory we have in the night that we broke down and we're in a gas station yeah. and we had them with us. Um but another thing too is uh Ariel and Kelsey, that dog game which um I'm guaranteeing that we're gonna have a whole segment on Dolly Tales about Ariel and Kelsey. Yep. Um they were like a whole segment of their own and I feel like that was the first dog game that like you know, we had our like little soap operas, like we had the one with Dentist Barbie, and then we had the Coco Woman Esmeralda era. I was era. so like, older when we did that stuff. We had some different ones, Ariel but Ariel and Kelsey was early. Because I got Ariel for my sixth birthday. Yeah. Um, but I remember like before then, like, I don't really remember, like, we played dolls together, but we fought a lot because yeah. I was a lot younger than Colleen, and like, I was like an animal with my I dolls. had this thing with share people sharing my toys. I think what it actually was is like a manifestation of OCD, not wanting other people touching my stuff. Yeah. But BSC now, she can touch my stuff and I can touch her stuff and what's hers is mine and mine is hers because, you know, we live together. 
But if somebody else was over here touching her stuff, it would bother me the same way it would bother me if someone was touching my stuff. It's funny because it's um, when we were little kids, we didn't get along at all. Like, she hated me. <laughs> I was jealous. And I, used I, to be I think part of why I'm, like, so sensitive and, like, why I always tried really hard to, like, people please was because I wanted Colleen to be my best friend. Like, that was, like, my goal. Like, my whole, like, little life, like, you know, two, three, four, five-year-old, six-year-old Shelly. Like, I just remember plotting how to get Colleen to, like, <laughs> I'll give you my allowance money. You can buy Teacher Barbie. Oh, you can. She have. did. She did pay for. And I would like Barbie. suck up to mom and dad because like I just I just had this thing where I wanted Colleen's approval and like when we when we'd be at home by ourselves, Colleen would even like get in physical fights. With yeah, me. like pushing against the wall. Like I'm the boss. You have to listen to me or I'll keep you against the wall. Yeah. When I stopped being the boss, I honestly think it's when she got so strong because she's very strong for how small she is. When she got so strong that no matter how hard I sat on her, she could throw me <laughs> off. That's when I stopped being the boss. Uh, yeah. And we had this joke since she was like eight or nine, she was the boss, like, get me an ice cream sandwich, Colleen. Yeah. And then, you know, she'd say, is it a wrapper? Come throw this away and get me another one. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny because, like, we are best friends now, but when we were really little, like, we really didn't get along. But I feel like part of why we started um, getting along more was because, um, a, we're both like really particular about things. I think we both have some forms of like OCD, so we're both really particular, like me with things being clean. And so if we could find a way that made it work for both of us. Yeah, and we understood like our weird dynamics. Plus, um, I think part of it too is like, I never really cared about having friends, to be honest with you. Like I stopped really caring about wanting friends in school because- When I realized she was a lot easier to boss around and bend to my will than- Yeah, you like kids on friends by your friends. Like, I would say as a whole, to summarize how we played with our dolls and like some of the sorts of memories that you're gonna hear about here on Dolly Tales is that we like to have like a cast of characters. So we'd pick the actors and actresses before we started a doll game. We'd also plan, especially this was more her end, like I was the one that kind of started the whole concept of a cast, like because I liked control, that element of control, yeah. knowing which dolls who was going to play with and before how they we were started. Related. Yep. That was that was more me. I mean not that she didn't totally buy into it, but her thing was the setup. Before we would play doll games as teenagers, she would take her whiteboard and she would actually map out Oh yeah, we would map out cast too, we would have like lists of like yep. who did what and I remember like I would even um, like pick themes like when we had enough play sets I would pick themes like oh we're gonna play with all 80s play sets or you know like what I thought back then was like based on the knowledge I had back then. Yeah. We just we did like a lot of weird things like that. It was it was all based on SMC Workshop, which will probably be a whole video, but it was like <laughs> our little like diluted like we're movie producers and I think if we were kids with cameras, we would have been like filming stuff and I would have been really into the editing end, which might be why I like making stuff so much for Flickr and like YouTube. I'm not gonna say like we never sit down and play with dolls as adults, because sometimes we do, but honestly like we kinda just grew out of that. Like we both like to look at all the dolls dressed up nicely and we don't like having all the stuff on the floor and like, you know. I mean, busy. I love like, you know, I'm the one who sets up most of the thumbnail pictures you see. Yeah. Like I'm the one who gets out the materials, puts them together in a certain way and then she tweaks how I arranged it and actually takes the pictures. It's because I like getting to like dress dolls in different clothes and put things out. I like doing things like that, like setting things up in a different way. But I like putting it all away after. The thing yeah. is when we used to play dolls, we would literally, the setup would just be out all the time in our basement. It actually got to the point where like, um, because we were allowed to keep our doll stuff set up in the basement all the time, when we would have to pick up for like mom and dad to clean or like whatever people were coming over, um, we actually would have gotten so much stuff in that time that we wouldn't even have a place for all of it. Right, and sometimes I remember we would actually have a special container that we kept out just in case dad made us pick up to put the dolls that we were always using yeah. and the pieces that we were currently playing with, like all the stuff that we really needed to just put back out when dad was done having people over or bringing something in the basement door. Yep. Like when dad was done that, so we'd be able to get it back out. Sometimes we wouldn't literally put it all away. Sometimes we'd set some of it aside. And I, I swear, like sometimes it would be like a year and we would still like, it would be, there was very few times where we actually like, packed everything up. Yeah. And, um, and our setups were huge. My biggest setup memory, it's actually strange because we've had so many and most of them were downstairs. My biggest setup memory and what she was saying about acquiring new stuff as we went was the summer um, after my freshman year of high school, summer 2003, my grandmother moved out that spring. She went to like, you know, a 
like retirement complex so I was moving up into her bedroom but over the summer dad didn't really feel like moving my stuff so he waited until like two days before school so for spring and summer we started moving all our Barbie stuff that we were playing with in my room it would start with you know just a few of our very favorite play sets and a few of our very favorite dolls but because we went shopping and would occasionally go downstairs yeah, and get other stuff. That was what the time when Dad was buying us the most. Stuff. Right, he would take Mom us out every weekend. Passed away, and that was his way. Of like, right, it was like it. a year after Mom passed away, and Dad was always just taking us out and buying us stuff. She had all those Happy Family play sets and her uh, what's that kitchen? The Blue Kitchen. Um, I forget the name of it. Something in style kitchen. Living in style. Living in style. There we go. The living in style kitchen. Like we had all kinds of stuff that hadn't we hadn't originally had, and it was just we all over dolls. the place. And new dolls. We actually would like play in the closets and in like the bathroom. <laughs> yep, in the bathroom that goes. Um, we made that our dog grooming room. station too. Yep, we used it as a dog grooming station. And I also made it Katie's room. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I remember when we had to pack it all up. Like there was so much stuff we really didn't even have places for it. No, and sometimes we use the closet to store our background people, and other times we use the closet to yeah, keep. Yeah, we use like, um. Becky's bedroom in. Mama's desk drawers that she left the desk behind. Oh, her. yeah. Desk drawers. Yeah, no, we'd taken over that entire room. Yeah, we had really elaborate setups. Like, they would just take up, like, an enormous amount of space. And, like, um, we would, like, redo the setup. But it would kind of, like, a lot of times be, like, parts of the setup. Because we did play with a lot of the same dolls. And we liked every doll to have her own room. And I remember we'd even, like, designate certain Barbie clothes that were, like, Becky's wardrobe. And yeah. We were really... We were very we, I remember I would make closets out of shoe boxes. Like, I was really involved with that. And um, I loved, like, crafting rooms out of, like, cardboard. And we really liked making stuff for the dolls. We were really into paper dolls. That'll definitely be a whole segment on this. Yeah, that will definitely be something we talk about. Yeah, I mean, because we just really liked... We, we got bored, like, watching TV or playing video games, and also, like, at some point our mom wouldn't let us, like, watch TV or play video games for a long time, so I think we weren't really in the habit. Yeah, mom had, like, a policy that, like, we were allowed to watch TV for, like, two hours or something a day, and after that, no TV. Yeah, and, um, I remember, like, we just, I think because of that, we both get bored really easy, <laughs> like, so we always want to do stuff, even, we were just always doing stuff, and I remember, um, we would literally, like, play dolls every chance we got like in the morning before school we would dress people for the next scene and um I remember that like on weekends we would wake up like really early like sometimes like seven o'clock like, we were up early we were up because I'm weekends. always like a morning person and I remember we'd like play and we'd only break for like meals so, like, <laughs> like we would literally be like upstairs for breakfast we play make-believe while we ate breakfast <laughs> then we'd go downstairs and we'd play dolls to lunch we'd go upstairs we'd play more make-believe while we ate lunch <laughs> then we'd go downstairs then we'd have dinner with dad and no make-believe <laughs> while we had dinner with dad and we'd usually watch tv with him and then we get bored of tv after a while and we go back downstairs and play dolls until like some obscene hour because dad didn't really make us go to bed at a certain time once in a while I mean, it'd be like 11 o'clock and we'd finally be going to bed and like we'd be sitting on like the basement floor for hours like just playing, playing with, dolls. with dolls and like then we'd wake up the next day and do I think that's probably why we got so burnt out of playing with dolls because it was literally like what we did all day every morning, day. noon and night and then in between we would do make-believe stuff like like we were always like involved in a fantasy world and I think that that's why as adults we kind of like to take a step back and just enjoy the dolls as like you know just being dolls and not always in character mode well but, what I like about what we do now most often is that because we're we're still getting to dress the dolls and groom the dolls and, and we do fun set the shoots. dolls up for photo shoots and we get to um, we have actually taken Molly and Josephina and um, 80s Molly and Sam out to the American Girl store. Like, we actually got to take dolls on road mm -hmm. trips. Yeah, and we took like, some other dolls with us at some point. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, one time we took, uh, it was Scaris Abby and Chad. Who is Stone. We took, we took the two of them out to Toys R Us. That was the day we bought your fear leading wear cats. Yep. The go team. And when cat. I got into Monster High, like, it was on my old Flickr account under the name Disney Doll Girl. And I got really into like making like little um, sketches with them. We would like set up little like scenes and we would do like a storyboard and we would all be with Monster High and like Bratz dolls. And like that was kind of like us playing. Like we, we developed like this little like world where like Laguna was dating Triton and you know like Eaton was dating Nevaeh. Like we had this whole like 
almost like side thing that like when we did play dolls a few times after some of that stuff that we did for like storyboards for Flickr yeah. actually was part of our doll game. And like we, we yeah, it's funny because when we took a break from the internet, there were a couple times that we played dolls. And in that time, Robin and her Scaris Deuce doll started dating. Pep Pal Skipper. <laughs> so yeah, Pep Pal Skipper and Scaris Deuce. Yeah. And it's funny because when I set up the uh, oh, hold on to your innocence photo, when I set that up, I put Deuce in there because he's Robin's boyfriend now. <laughs> That's why he made yeah. that photo. It's funny, like it, like for us, it doesn't didn't stop just because we grew out of like playing with dolls when we were younger like we, we still play with them occasionally and there's still like a fun spirit behind it we have like a lot of jokes like there are dolls that have like nicknames like mean fiona who all the dolls that sit near her happen to fall off the shelf like we have all kinds of like little like inside jokes and like you know if you've watched videos we'll make jokes about like oh caroline's jealous like you know i guess to us like dolls are still very much like alive in their own way it's just we don't like sit from morning, noon, and night and play with them. And I mean, we, we couldn't anyways. We're adults with obligations <laughs> and jobs and stuff. But, you know, um, it definitely, I don't think like to play with dolls, there's this misconception that like to use your dolls, you have to play with them. And I was always afraid as a kid of like that collecting was a stiff and boring hobby. But I think it's what you make it. I think if you like have a fun and playful childlike spirit about it, like it's not any different. And no, we have just as much fun. I with appreciate them. dolls even more now than I did when I was younger because I take better care of them. And it's not just about who I'm playing with; it's about all of them and fixing them all up. And there are dolls that I wouldn't have like wanted to play with as a kid that I really love collecting and that I really like enjoy. I mean, like Monster High is something that like if they had been out when I was a kid, oh my god, <laughs> my collection probably would have been like 300 dolls in a very short amount of time because. As it was, I have like 130, <laughs> and a lot of those, like I'd say 70 or 80, were from like that first year. You yeah, were because I was obsessed in them, and I mean they're very addictive. But there are other things that we collect, like a lot of like 80s Barbies and stuff, aren't the kinds of things I would want to play with. But I really love collecting them, and I don't know, they they're like little people to me, and they have like you know little stories and stuff and that's kind of like what we want to bring to this video series is like the playful side and it's not just going to be focused on like the games we did with our dolls it's going to be focused on like a lot of different things and I actually had ideas for videos um beforehand that I've had for a while that happened to like fit into this series, series. better than um, the Dolly Diaries um, better but we're still doing Dolly Diaries. Um, yeah, well Dolly Diaries is like like kind of like our vlogs, like what we do with our dolls on a kind of regular basis. We were just really weird and a lot of what we thought was funny was probably not funny to anyone else. Like, <laughs> like Rob being a witch doctor? But I think a lot of kids were like that because I know like, if I did play with other kids they would do like weird things with dolls that to me was like <laughs> but like they thought it was funny, you know. We had like toilet humor and stuff. We were really into. I still think toilet humor is funny. Soap opera, like uh, there was always like a broken family and a twisted love story. Oh, and then there was the time that uh, we did like the witness protection program. Yeah, we watched a lot of crime shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we didn't actually ever like make our American Girls talk. They were like our. I mean, I remember making them talk like one time. I and never I, did. Yeah, I I like flat out never did. I just remember they were our sidekicks, like. It was Molly. You can't make Molly talk. Well, I used to imagine when I first got Molly that she came here on a time machine to get away from the war. <laughs> I don't know. Colin got really into World War II stuff. <laughs> there were a lot of Nazi bad guys when we were kids. <laughs> totally not politically correct, but Colleen would like research all this stuff and then she'd be like coming back and be like, oh, the bad guys are, you know. <laughs> like, it's like I was really into like Egyptian stuff. And so, like, a lot of that would get incorporated. Like, I would have, like, dolls that were Egyptian that didn't even look Egyptian. <laughs> a lot of people, like, our make believe people, or a lot of my dolls were like, vegetarians when I was a little kid, and I was, like, obsessed with that. Uh, my Kid Core Katie doll was a vegetarian, but she wasn't really a vegetarian, <laughs> which was a running joke. Uh, there's actually going to be a whole separate video just on my Katie yeah, doll. Yeah, Katie's a character. Katie, uh, my Kid Core Katie doll is probably our most infamous character of all of them. And I really hope you guys enjoy this kind of series. Uh, next time we make one, it'll be more themed and like I'll have like cute titles to kind of match what we're gonna talk about. Like we have a lot of like stories and stuff on Flickr. Like under each doll, we'll talk like a lot about them and like things we did with them. But I know a lot of you guys don't have Flickr or aren't interested in looking at pictures and reading. But a lot of this stuff is like actually already on Flickr. It's just kind of like with the dolls it's supposed to be. So this is kind of more of a way to like unite those similar stories and experiences and put them in the video form because uh, more people 
like seem interested in like watching the videos and stuff. You will definitely be seeing more videos. Hopefully I can get back to like the regular like two to three a week. Those dolls that were featured in our unexpected finds will be appearing in a transform transformation video coming soon to this channel. So until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.